Um, very unusual way to deliver my part of the talk. I do apologise for not being there with you. Uh, I think I'd much rather be with you in Myanmar than sort of uh, stuck with an inspection in my school here in Mid Wales. Um, it was a real privilege and honour to be asked by the British Council, um, Myanmar, and Dominic Register and uh, Microsoft to um, contribute a section to the ASEAN um, Deeper Learning Conference Series, which um, you're all sitting there and hopefully you've had an extraordinary conference already um, um, today and uh, I hope I can help add something more to that um, as well um, as part of this huge dialogue that educators are having thanks to the British Council and Microsoft. Um, I've been asked to speak about some of the challenges and developments, uh, uh, the challenges and opportunities in how we develop our global citizens um, our students, they are the global citizens, no matter what country or nationality we think of them, they are the global citizens and they're, and they're global citizens now. And I want to sort of share my experience that I've had in several schools and working with um, different sort of parts of the world and of course with the British Council. So the first thing I did of course was I, I spoke to my students about the challenge of kind of what it meant to be a global citizen, so how they viewed the world. And as you can see from the word all, um, lots and lots of different sort of um, ideas came up there from different groups. I thought diversity was interesting to be one of the largest, education, um, tolerance, the environment, their identity. I'm going to talk a lot about um, why global citizenship is really important here in Wales and how that helps us develop global citizenship as well. And we see that as an opportunity as well as some of the challenges behind that. But I thought it was interesting when we asked the students what they thought a global citizen um, should be aware of. Um, I, proof is in the pudding, uh, Lydia here is one of our 15 year old students, she's um, in a final year of compulsory school, she wants to take um, possibly the International Baccalaureate um, as a way of then getting into university, but I said to Lydia, um, what do you think it is as a, as a learner, what's the challenge that you see that perhaps educators have to be aware of, and Lydia put it quite succinctly, she said, as young people our whole lives have been immersed in 21st century media. Um, I've been able to deliver this talk to you um, because students here behind that camera um, have the technology and the know-how how to sort of deliver such a thing now. Um, some students as young as four can work and understand the complex working of new technology, yet schools and teachers refuse to embrace opportunities that it offers. Schools need to acknowledge and act upon new and exciting ways of learning and the global society that we live in, and fast. It's a 15 year old girl, she's there with her, the assembly member um, for the Welsh um, Parliament um, where they interviewed her and put their questions to her about the environment recently. Um, that's, that's a 15 year old girl's take on what a global citizenship challenge is for educators. They need this new pedagogy, these deeper technologies, they need that embraced in learning, into deeper learning and we have to know what we have to do to get that into our lessons, into our schools as part of their education, part of that holistic education. Um, I don't know, I, I normally ask a question, I can't really see any hands up at the moment, so I'll go say, who, who said this? The world is a book and those who do not travel read only one page. It was actually um, the 5th century monk, Saint Augustine, and this notion that actually, if you look at holistic education, you look at what is an education, it's maths and it's science, it's English, it's learning languages, it's going to school, it's the discipline, it's the self-discipline, it's um, students being able to progress. It's also about making sure that education is moving somewhere and it's also about wrapping it into a global context which we can't ignore in 2014. Um, I don't know how you feel um, education is sometimes in reality um, and in an idealistic way but um, for me and for the colleagues I work with um, there is no way that education is about shoving children through a meat grinder into an amorphous hole um, so they all end up a brick in a wall. I think for school leadership in particular, so for the school leaders here and policy makers in this conference, and this was the same thing that was echoed in Vietnam, you have to really think consciously about what it is you're doing in your schools and what kind of education you want for your society, for the economy, um, for society as a whole. We do not want grad grind, we do not want to push these kids 
through this meat grinder, we want to celebrate diversity, individuality, creativity. These are the watchwords of a dynamic global society and economy. Um, the drivers for us in Wales are probably similar to you in, in East Asia. Um, Wales took a hammering this year because of its PISA rankings. Um, I think it was due, uh, the OECD in particular um, said Wales lacks a long term vision for its education. And of course, as I'm with you at the moment, um, we have external verifiers from the government inspectors to make sure what we're doing actually counts. I, I embrace those drivers. I think those are good drivers to actually challenge what you're doing in schools and what policymakers are doing with education. Because it's, education is too important just to, to leave casually. So for us, those drivers are important where we see Wales as a country within the UK, within Europe and within the world. And, um, I think leadership for me is the key to developing global citizenship, that sort of trickle down effect. We need champions of this, but an individual teacher in a classroom, and if there are individual teachers in the conference right now, they might be thinking, well, I'm not empowered to change policy, I'm not empowered to change the curriculum. And I think your leadership are the key. Drucker said management is doing the right thing, doing things right, leadership is doing the right things. Leadership is doing the right things. This is what Michael. Um, sort of Fullen was getting at with his new book this year about the principal, um, the school leader being a leader of learning. Um, and um, Harry S. Truman says you can, can accomplish anything if you don't mind who gets the credit. And I would really recommend that as Michael um, Fullen's idea of driving this deeper learning conference along with Maria Langworthy's, I would suggest that uh, for school leaders and policy makers, uh, his book on the principal is, is a must read. Uh, but school leadership is crucial to drive global citizenship in your schools. Um, and we're out of conscious of time, and I doubt this might be edited. But um, um, I just want us to go to Hannah Arendt's. A citizen is a definition, a citizen among citizens of a country, among countries. We cannot isolate who we are. The world is too interdependent now. Even the most isolated countries can't shut out the world. Um, I like the idea of the ancient Greeks. Back then, a citizen was about playing a role in advancing society. I think that's an incredible way of looking at global citizenship. It's about advancing society. Um, there are so many opportunities. It's an incredible journey to be involved in. I think it's the most meaningful thing a teacher, an educator, a school leader, a policymaker um, can be involved in developing global learning opportunities. There are so many ways you can develop this. And I think it brings learning alive. I think that's the key when we look at the deeper learning. This is why global citizenship is such a key of those aspects that uh, Michael Fulon and um, Maria Langworthy highlighted in their paper. Um, and I do think that, you know, when we look at the definition, what is a global citizen, although from 1999, what Parker et al. were talking about is that we can actually empower our young people. After all, that's what we can do with our education. We can only pass this baton on to them. Um, I've mentioned the IB, the International Baccalaureate I've been involved in for a number of years and um, I contributed some of this, uh, an example to this book by Boyd Roberts. He says, think about the three C's about global citizenship, in the taught curriculum, in the cultural ethos of your school and also in the wider community. If you think about global citizenship in those three C's, and it is still worth look at that book, it only came out a couple of years ago, a practical guide for schools with wonderful examples of global citizenship all across the world. Um, the IAB, very similar in some respects to what um, the conclusions that um, Fullen and Langworthy came to, but for, for the IAB they actually start with a learner profile, they actually look at what a learner should be, not what subjects they should necessarily learn, or you know they will have five grade A's and they will do this and they'll go to university. They actually look at the aspirational sort of skill set that a learner should have. Um, if a curriculum and a school is designed and an educational policy is designed with these principles in mind. Um, you've probably heard a lot about the Vietnam Conference and you should because it was an incredible um, uh, conference to actually get so many people in the same room and committed um, to developing um, the principles of Michael Full and the deeper learning and actually with the support of Microsoft and the British Council, and everybody recognised that the new technologies and the new pedagogies, they have to be part of what we're doing in our classrooms and in our schools for our learners. Uh, I was very privileged to go and visit one school, and here's new global citizens in Hanoi, um, 
um, a couple of Saturdays ago at an incredible international global citizen conference um, that they had organised with looking at the outside world and looking at um, how to sort of engage with that world and what that could be brought back to them. An incredible sort of opportunity for those students. Global Citizenship in Action brought to that conference um, a few weeks ago in Vietnam. For me, I've had a remarkable, uh, fortunate career to witness so many different moments. Um, I don't know where I even... <laughs> uh, the space um, um, sort of uh, uh, shuttle, the sort of the, the astronauts up there on the space station, um, the leadership conferences in my schools, um, being able to visit different things, video conferencing, students taking responsibility for their own learning, leadership, um, UN conferences on huge issues like HIV or poverty. This is global citizenship. Um, and I would urge you very, very strongly that as part of the work you're doing in this conference and part, part of the ASEAN um, Deeper Learning Conference series is that you make sure there's an action plan of how you will implement global citizenship. I can tell you now, colleagues, that the one thing you can't do is ignore it. It won't go away. Um, and your students will love you for it when you start to say, guess what, today we're going to go and link with another school. Or, do you know what, you've asked me a question about this country and I think we should all research it. What are we using? Can we use the internet? Can we perhaps bring some ideas in? Um, who wants to stand up and sort of take a lead on this? Or, and that empowerment is extraordinarily powerful. I've been very privileged in my career to enjoy some really um, amazing moments in education. Thank you for listening. Um, and I can't ask for any questions, which I'm not sure is a good thing or a bad thing. Um, but I wish you success with the rest of the, of the, of the conference. Thank you.